Okay, I'm making this video to show how I'm using Minecraft education in my classroom. Um, thanks to, big thanks to Luke and Brad and Dan for helping me get them installed on everybody's computers. Okay, so got them downloaded. Click on the play here. These are some of the things we've We've done some math. Um, I'm going to focus on our history we've been doing with them. Um, okay, to start off, we... Okay, so starting world history, we've been learning about um, Mesopotamia. Um, so we started off with the Sumerian civilization. And so I taught my lessons uh, like normal and gave them worksheets. And I used Minecraft education uh, kind of for two reasons. One, for as a reward... Um, to get to build what they were learning in history. Also, as a way to obviously cement the learning or, or reinforce the things that they had learned. So, um, this is our Sumerian village that we built, um, patterned after real Sumerian villages from above. Let's get this full screen here. Okay, so um, how we started was I um, first taught about um, nomadic peoples and how um, they would wander from place to place uh, for food, you know, and that's easily relatable to, to, um, to them. And we talked about fish camp and moose camp, and we said the ancient Sumerians were similar, that they had to go um, from place to place to find resources. And, um, and then we talked about the biggest, one of the biggest inventions in the world, which was wheat, which allowed them to stay in one place because they could grow wheat all year round and they could store it for many for a long time so um, now we learned these things and they had a worksheet and their reward is if they worked really hard usually the last five or ten minutes um, they could get on Minecraft education and that we could do our our next part of our assignment in Minecraft so the first few times was really difficult and then eventually they were starting to work hard they were angry when when they didn't get the reward the first couple times and uh, but then they learned they needed to work hard, so they did. Um, one of the first vocabulary that words they learned after um, nomad, nomadic peoples and sedentary peoples was specialized labor. So everyone got a job. So starting off here, um, Misty was our herdsman. She built the wall and put these animals in it so we could have food. Because um, when they first got on Minecraft, everyone was... You know, and, and, and I, I wouldn't even let them say play in Minecraft education. If they want to talk about it, they have to say, um, can, can we learn in Minecraft education? Because um, that's kind of the main goal is that they should be in this simulated environment, um, learning, making history come alive. So uh, they all got jobs, and they had to write it on their worksheet, and they had a, a primary job and a secondary job so they could learn. Um, and, and so when they, the first time they got on, they were just running all around trying to survive. And everyone was saying, oh, I'm dying because they didn't have enough food. And so it was kind of like the Sumerians real, in real life. They, um, and so the second time we played, I, I made a bigger emphasis on, on the worksheet that, you know, we have to work together. And if you are a herdsman, you need to really work hard on making sure that the village has um, enough food, enough animals. And so the same way with the farmer you know the farmer he couldn't be out you know if you're a farmer you can't be out um, mining all day you've got to be making the farm so we had designated miners which were Sheldon and backup Vernon and we had um, Misty who was our herdsman her herdswoman and we had uh, Stuart who was our, our uh, farmer see this beautiful farm Stuart has made and we had um, uh, Charles was our wise man and also our trader, and um, Vernon was our, he was our craftsman, so he built tools, and um, Arthur built all everybody's huts and put these, um, these signs on everyone's huts. Now, one cool thing is when uh, teaching them about Sumerians, I, I taught them that, uh, I didn't teach them, I mean, those little v video we watched showed Sumerians sleeping on their, the top of their houses, um, because their houses were really hot during night and so they would sleep on their the balconies and so they just on their own put m most everybody put balconies on their uh, in in our village here so that was kind of cool 
Um, now, then we talked about the progression of civilization. You know, um, we built a wall for protection. Um, Ethan was our warrior. Um, they learned. They learned after the third or fourth time. They really learned that they needed to do their job, because I mean, if uh, if they got, they got attacked at night and we didn't have a wall, um, you know, that they had, that was consequences. That there was consequences, and I could tell they kind of remembered specialized labor the third or fourth time I was talking about it. It's like, oh yeah, that means having jobs, you know, like like one job. And I said, yeah, because if everybody has do, is doing everything, you know, then um, sometimes we don't we're not a strong village, and so it's important to do your job. Okay, so as civilization progressed, they built what we call here the ziggurat, um, which was we talked about city states and about um, how people after they had become powerful, um, a bunch of different villages got together and became this city state. And we actually built the ziggurat of Ur which I taught them was a place, it was a religious temple that they, one of the very first giant um, monumental architecture we have on the earth um, is the ziggurat of Ur, and there's multiple ziggurats. And so they built this, and this is, was a good math um, cross-curricular application. I said, okay, our base level, and I, they, we had this video, or this, um, we had this uh, picture right here. You know, so they, they were looking at this picture, and um, so I said our base is going to be 64 by 64. And um, I didn't do it then, but a great application is if we are doing area, and is to say, you know, what's the, what's, the, what's the area of our base, you know, and then what's the volume of our base. And then I told them to go 8 in and 5 up and build the second level. And I didn't build any of this. You know, they built it all on their own. Um, and... Uh, so they built it all, and and a cool thing was right at the end of the lesson, I said, okay, so I'm going to teach you guys what happened to the Sumerians. And they were like, what happened to the Sumerians? And I said, they all died. And I said, what? And we talked about um, using our resources right and about making sure we have protections and that possibly maybe if they weren't building such grand structures and maybe focused more on getting along with their neighbors or defending self, themselves against the neighbors, they wouldn't have been totally destroyed. Um, some of the things you can do in Minecraft is the kids can put posters up like this. And every day I would give them assignment. And the last day they had to put posters up and say something. But we kind of run out of time. So you'll see a couple of blank posters about that kids had started writing things and they they had to do some research about the Sumerians to say kind of one thing that they really learned about the Sumerians and put it in the place um, and I want to do some more of that they also have a book if you look at the bottom right part um, there's our map our portfolio they would write and take pictures of, of what they did that day and I'm supposed to be able to access those portfolios but I haven't quite figured that out yet but they were doing that just to make sure they were they were learning. But I, I kind of know, I, I really liked it because, one, it wasn't like we did it every single day. It didn't take over the lesson. Um, but you'd hear them talking in the halls, and they were talking about the ziggurat, and they were talking about the Sumerians. And I couldn't quite get them to understand that this is like 7,000 years ago, a long, long time. I mean, they understood that, but um, I hope they kind of understand in context. But it's hard to get sixth graders to understand contextual history and things like that but my there's a lot of things I do different but um, I think for the first time it was a pretty good go so Minecraft education JD's classroom here in Ruby teacher out